You know when you feel absolutely certain about something? Like 100%, you know this is what you're going to do. You know it, 100%. This is absolutely the thing. You plan it, you know, you might even plan it out ahead in every meticulous detail. And, well, sometimes if you're given the time to think about it, you decide to go in the complete opposite direction. Because when I was sitting in that ship with Billy and Tom, we, we just sat in silence for a good half an hour, ignoring incoming transmissions for us to come back and how many regulations we were breaking. We didn't even know where we were going. We didn't know where we were going to find this mysterious benefactor. We didn't know what we were going to do, but it didn't matter. We were sure that we were going to do it, no matter what. Because for some reason that we felt if we met this mysterious benefactor, then, you know, maybe we could make everything right. It doesn't... When you think about it, when I say it like that, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's like when you're sad... And you just don't know why. I mean, you know there's many, many things you can do to try and cheer yourself up, but nothing you seem to do does. And sometimes there's not a logical reason for being sad. You just are. It's something that you just can't control. And then that can lead to stuff like a panic attack, because, well, why are you sad? There's no logical reason for you to be sad in that. If there isn't, you know, why am I sad? Why? Why? There's no reason for him. Why is nothing, you know, cheer me up in that? Why? It doesn't make sense at all. Like, why so early on into this? Why am I taking things so personally? I, I just don't know. Is, is it something that just clicked with me? Did I relate to it? I don't know. All I know is, is things happen there and then in the moment. And sometimes maybe just the best thing you can do is just... Accept it. Accept that things are just out of your control. Odd shit happens to people. And... Well, I guess... Life just goes on. Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that... Sometimes... I feel like crying. And I think to myself... Is there a point... Is there a point to anything I do? Am I good at doing anything? I mean, my natural ability in that, that isn't a talent. You know, that requires no effects on my part. It's just something that now happens naturally within my DNA. I mean, what can I do? Nothing. I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't do accounting or anything. It's... it's just the utter feeling of uselessness. And people say to you, Oh, no, no, no. You're not useless. You're good at da-da-da-da-da. This, this, that, knit nap panty just... <laughs> You're not, though. I mean, they're your either friends or family in that, and of course they're going to say you're good at something. But... Are you really, though? Because, at the end of the day, do you feel like you're excelling something? Or do you just feel that maybe you're okay at doing something? And it just makes me scared. It makes me scared that I'm just completely useless. That, no matter what I do, I know that my best is absolutely crap. So what's the point even trying at anything? It's just a natural thing now for me, just built in. I mean, it's, I don't know. Like, if, if someone's, you know, good-looking, naturally good-looking, you know, there's, a, there's nothing they can do about that. They didn't, you know, train or get surgery in that to become good-looking. They just naturally were. And would you call that a talent? I mean, that's how I feel with 
Me being able to mimic vocals perfectly. <sighs> you know what? I digress. I'll... I'll just get on with this. So there we were, myself, Tom, and Billy, just saying nothing, just staring and, well, we were obviously, you know, we had our eyes on space and that to make sure we didn't crash into anything. And, you know, Tom was piloting it since he'd been given the bare basics. I mean, apparently it was more like driving a car than flying an aircraft you know it's amazing what they can teach you in such a short space amount of time when people actually put some effort into it you know just a just a bit of effort i mean you know if you don't know something just ask and if they can't help you with it well just ask someone else i guess but anyway regardless i finally decided to break the silence and spoke tom what are we doing? What are we doing? What is the point of this? I mean, we're an impressionist band. I mean, just what the hell... We're just doing in space. You know? Look, it makes me think. And I've pulled you into this. And I didn't think about it myself, and... Maybe it's because I've sobered up a bit about this. Tom, without turning, replied. The reason... I decided to come, Domfrey, was because I believed, and I hope you do as well, Max, the reason you accepted this was because maybe, just hopefully, that your sense of morality had taken over. To be honest, I didn't know what to say to that. I don't know how to apply to it at all. So I did the only thing I knew how to do in that situation. I went over to him and just hugged him. A hug is, can be, is, in my experience, always a very good way of breaking the ice and sowing affection and showing so many emotions and saying so much without speaking a single word. Tom eventually said, OK, that's enough, Don Free. And with that was the perfect moment to fully break the ice and mellow us all out. Ooh, you know you're enjoying it, Tom. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. Get off! said Tom, who seemed in a humorous but also slightly agitated mood at the same time. You know you love me, Tom. You know you love it. Hey, don't worry, I'm trying to fucking pilot this. Get off. I turned to Billy. Come on, Billy, jump on as well. We'll have a go threesome. Billy, with his newfound confidence, wasn't sure. It seemed to slightly diminish slightly. But then Billy just said, I'll see if you can handle Tom before you see if you can handle me. Challenge accepted, I said. Then with one big swoop, Tom threw me off him. <laughs> you know, it feels... feels like how we did at the beginning, you know? Tom, you remember at the beginning, you know, when I was... Just kind of like, well, looking like this, going to get a few gigs. And we all went on Chatty Man with Alan Carr. Yes, I do remember, said Tom. You put your tongue down his throat. Yes, I did. Though I felt it was very enjoyable for the both of us. Billy then spoke up. You did the same thing with Graham Norton. Hey, what can I say? When you've got a stick, you roll with it. So snogging people is your stick, Tom replied. And let me just try and explain that for me. I mean, yes, it's a bit jokey and that and the snog kind of thing. I mean, you know, every guest on a talk show and that either will shake hands or hug the guests. But, you know, 
Why not just take it a step further? What's the worst can happen apart from, well, possibly uh, getting prosecuted because of it? Let's just say um, Jonathan Ross wasn't as uh, welcoming to it as, say, Graham or Alan was. We then received a transmission from Commander Spats. I looked at Tom and I said, Ah, go on. I'm in a good mood at the minute. Let's hear what he has to say. Of course, what he asked to say to us was uh, absolutely vile, saying that we should be imprisoned as well as the people that we tried to put into prison. We all detested to this, me especially, and after several arguments debating the same thing over and over and over again, we finally agreed that we would return to USP after we'd met this mysterious benefactor and had a conversation with him. So, a bit reluctantly, but also appreciating my natural abilities at last, we were given the coordinates to USP's benefactor. We set off to that location immediately. Once arriving there, we found that it was several ships in the shape of rings like Saturn. There were six of them in total, each one bigger that went round the smaller one. They were all constantly rotating. Apparently this was equivalent to some sort of like office blocks or something along those lines, with the big boss benefactor in the middle. The centre of everything, eh? USB had contacted this place ahead of time and arranged us an appointment, which I guess was better than just barging in there and possibly either getting shocked, arrested, dry humped, or was that just a fancy I just had? Hmm. Regardless, we were given clearance and we entered the Santa Circle ship. Despite being the smallest one and in the centre, it was very large. I would say about the size of a military base, although I've personally never been to one, so I couldn't tell you if that was the correct size. Though I assume that's what the sizes are. Uh, anyway, anyway, I, I would say we were greeted on arrival, although that would be a lie. There were people there when we arrived, although they weren't, um... Well, they weren't friendly or disfriendly, just very cold. We just confirmed our identities and then just led us off. Down various corridors filled with what I assume were high-tech computer banks and electronic equipment of all sorts. Again, just a cold and empty field was no noise whatsoever, in fact. No real sense of atmosphere in there at all. And the two people that were leading us, well, one of them looked humanoid enough, whether they were human or not, I have no idea. The other one looked a bit more lizard-like, had four legs, two arms, as well as having four eyes. The more and more I skated in space, the less and less I, well, seemed to stand out and seemed less special as a result. Now, most people or a lot of people would say, well, isn't that a good thing to fit in and that's all... <sighs> Fitting in is boring. It just is, for me personally. I love standing out from the crowd and that. I love feeling special about it, even though the special thing is just a natural thing now, part of me. It, it just makes me feel like I've got some sort of importance, which, you know, is immediately obvious to people that I stand out and that. But here, well, not really. At the USP station, then... Well, yes, though, because most of them were humanoids, but then again, I didn't really scan it as much because they were used to seeing alien races and that, so it just didn't really seem to click anymore. It sounds very vain, I know, and also selfish, but the thing is, though, when you find something that does make you happy like that in, in a legitimate way, then you're not harming anyone. You just gotta hold on to it. Just hold on as best as you can. Me trying to hold on to what made me, me, and stand out for everyone else, uh, well, just kept slipping away. I mean, true, I did have, still have the natural ability, but obviously I realised, well, that species must be out here somewhere, and, well, were they high intelligence? Had they evolved? I had no idea. Heck, I couldn't even remember what species my DNA was now mixed with. And, you know, if that species was intelligent, would I seem an abomination to them? I didn't know what they looked like naturally. 
I mean, if I look odd, you know, to people, to humans and that, what must I look like to them? I don't exactly know the balance of how much of me is still human and how much of me isn't. But, I swear, I'll find it out someday. I will. I will. I've got, I've got time. I've got time to do stuff. Like, tell the rest of this story, anyway. Tell the rest of it. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway. We entered a massive looking boardroom sort of place, although it was all made of metal and lack of colour anywhere. And me being me, of course, um, I addressed the room. Good morning, or evening, or afternoon. I don't know, I can't really tell anymore. Um, I am Mr. Donfrey Doncast. Uh, uh, this is Tom, and this is Billy. We're not very happy, to uh, put it bluntly, and, you know, we'd like to talk to you in a calm and respectful way, and I know you're benefacting USP, who, you know, I'm not going to deny, they probably do do really good work in that store. Maybe it's uh, pushing their limits and that's a bit. Maybe they're going a little bit over the line. And frankly, I'm frankly disgusted by it. And if you want us to work there, and let's not kid ourselves, you clearly do. Because you need someone with my unique ability. That also made me realise something at that second. The species that my DNA was spliced with. Obviously, USP couldn't use them. So what was it? Was it intelligence that I added to the equation? Eh, I'd like to think so, but who knows. But anyway. So come on, then. I said, where's this big benefactor, then? <sighs> because I've got a few things to say, and I've got the teeth to chomp down on it. And believe me when I say, you're not getting a snug at the end of this one. For fuck's sake, Donfrey, stop taking the piss, said Tom. Why not, Tom? Hmm? Why not? I've got nothing else to lose at this minute. I mean, my career is basically gone and that way, doing small little gigs and pubs. And then suddenly USP beam us off and that to do all this stuff. Besides, I like to see a face when I'm talking to someone. Talk is not necessary. Talk is not necessary. Talk is not necessary. We all turned to face the massive conference area. Where are you then? I asked. I can't see you anywhere. We are everywhere. We are all around you. We think and we control everything. So what, their computer? Asked Billy. Hmm. You know what, Billy? Something keeps changing about you, and I don't know whether I like it or not yet. But so far I am, so I'm going to roll with it. Yeah. Computer, are we? Is that what this is? Just a massive computer at the centre? Cybernetic. Cybernetic? I questioned. You are a hive mind organism. However, in order for our thoughts to reach others, we must be connected to this computer machine. So, what runs you, Resp? He is a hive mind of creatures connected to a computer, and the reason they're connected is to ensure that other life forms can communicate with them. Okay, I got you, I got you. But if you're financially benefacting them, then... Well, I've just got to ask, how the hell did you get that money? We provide a service. We also get advertising rights. Besides, it is none of your business. Eh, well, yeah, fair enough. Maybe your financial side isn't. To be honest, it doesn't really bother me at this point. The work does is the way that you're allowing USP to treat people. Which seems completely unjust and unfair. Ah, oh, yes. We have a report of what your opinions are on their practices. And... 
What do you wish from us? What do I wish? Isn't it bloody obvious what I wish? I want you to stop. I want you to be fair. Listen, am I the one to put full moral judgment over everything? No. But neither is one person. It should be a collective thing. It should be left up to the majority. Oh, God, I'm sounding like a bloody politician at the minute. But I guess democracy in life does work. Oh. Look, I just want these people, these, you know, deemed criminals and that to speak of something fair. You seem to sympathise with them. Well, some of them. Ones that try to kill me, maybe not so much. Doesn't that seem biased? Of course it's biased, Tom raised his voice. Everyone is biased, no matter what, no matter how politically correct they pretend to be. Everyone is biased for something. But it's also being able to see that you are biased. And to try and put your biases aside. To be fair. To be uncorrupted. If this is all your simple conditions, then we will accept and put your demands in place immediately. Thank you. On the condition that you return to USP immediately with a week's wage cut. Wait, 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 what? A week's wage? Yes, for wasting our time and also disobeying direct orders. Very hypocritical of you. Do you feel that you should fit outside of the law? Well, no, obviously not, but... Uh, look, listen, listen, there must be something. Tom grabbed me by the shoulder. Don't worry. We'll accept it. This way, you know, it's nice peaceful, isn't it? But Tom, they can't do this... To us? Come on. They met our demands. We still get to keep our jobs. I'd say that's pretty fair. Besides, it's going to be a week. A lot of things I can do in a week, Tom. A lot of shit can happen in a week. I mean, look at me. This happened to me in a day. Heck, not even a day in the evening. And that changed my life forever. Oh, Tom groaned at me. Don't worry, I honestly thought you were changing. But now I can see you're just a piece of shit. You always were. I am fucking sick to death of your selfish behaviour and that. You don't care about the social and the justice or whatever like that, do you? No, you don't. You've just been on about this and that because you just don't want this to happen to you. Now, Tom, that's not fair, I replied. But Tom was ignoring me. Not fair, not fair, not fair. You keep saying how life isn't fair. Well, this isn't fair, is it? But tough shit, we have to get on with it, don't we? Hmm? At least some of us are trying. At least some of us aren't a useless piece of shit that can't do anything. Hmm? Yeah, that's you. You can't do nothing at all. You're fucking useless. Are you getting those natural abilities that you now have? You'd probably be homeless. On benefits. Trying to scrape every single last penny you got. Begging on the streets. That was it. Tom had pushed the exact right buttons and my anger had rose. I shouted, I'll show you who's a useless piece of shit! Ah! I grabbed Tom's arm and sinked my teeth into him. I could feel the blood in my mouth as it poured out of Tom's arm. Tom yelled at the top of his voice. Billy ran over and prized my jaw open and then punched me down to the floor. Tom was then escorted to go and get some medical treatment, whereas I was still shouting abuse at him. Now you'll always have a reminder, Tom! You'll always have a reminder of what I can do to you! It was one of those moments, one of those anger moments, where 
at the time you convince yourself that you 100% mean everything you're seeing. All the horrible stuff you see in that, you tell yourself, yes, this is exactly how I feel. But then later on, who knows, it could be an hour, a week, who knows. But eventually, you look back at this, and you will regret it. It may take a while. Heck, you may be scoffing about it, but you'll still feel regret. I wish I hadn't have done what I did. I wish I was able to control my anger. But I can't. And I've tried the self-help stuff and that, and it just doesn't work. I mean, what do you do when the treatment, which is supposed to help you, just doesn't work? It's not something you can just get rid of. And to be honest, stuff like depression, anger management, and other mental issues and that, they never go away. No, 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 they never go away. The treatment and that, so try... And get rid of them. And you never get rid of them. You just have to learn to cope with them. And learn how to control them. And yet. It kills you inside. No matter what. It just kills you. When I try and hold back my anger. It's internally killing me. And when I act out my anger. It's also killing me. No matter what I do. I always feel like I'm dying inside. And who knows, I might as well be. And sometimes I think to myself, should I just die? It'll make it easier on me, and easier on everyone, but that's the easy way out. And unfortunately, I've got to stick with this. Keep trying to convince myself that I'll find a way out of it. That I will get better. And hey, maybe if you're Tell yourself a lie for long enough. Maybe you'll start accepting it as the truth. Or maybe you'll just be worse than ever. (laughs) 